Roy is calling us from Illinois. Roy's pronouns are he, him, and says the Bible is true and there is evidence. So welcome, Roy. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Sure. Good. All right. You got one minute. Go. Give us the evidence the Bible's true. Oh, and by the way, I do claim that the, the Bible is historical fiction, so some of it is true, but some of it isn't. Sure. That's my position. But you have one minute. Go. Okay. Okay, thank you. I, I think I would propose the case for biblical truth. Um, uh, I, I think from the historical Jewish perspective, from the historical Jewish narrative of a uh, coming Messiah, and all of the typology that you find in the Hebrew text, I feel like there's, there's a very strong congruency coming from the Old Testament, which was, you know, as you guys know, it was written over a long period of time until the coming of Jesus, you know, the Messiah. I, I truly think that there is a congruence there that is very uh, accurate, you know, whether the Jewish the Palestinian Jewish uh, people at the time didn't recognize it or not. Uh, I don't think that just because one certain group of people didn't recognize the Messiah, I don't think that means that there was a Messiah walking on earth at the time. So, you know, I, I've Oh, you're, you're, your minutes up. Are, are you, are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. I'm, right. Keep going though. Yeah. Roy. Keep, keep going. Cause I think you were in mid thought. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I've, I've heard other Christian callers, uh, in the past, and I personally, as, as a fetus myself, I get very confused as to how they propose their 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 side of the story. Because you know, to me, you know, what what I've studied in the Bible, I think there's a there's a very linear story being told in in, in the Hebrew text, pointing towards the coming Messiah, and then Jesus shows up in, in history, mm -hmm. and I, I think that you know he kind of came to. Uh, kind of interpret as as the you know supposed son of God. Kind of interpret all the mysteries in the Hebrew text. Okay. So, would would you say the the uh, story of Moses and uh, the Exodus is an important part of that? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So you you know that the both uh, Jewish or excuse me Israeli archaeologist and Egyptian archaeologist. Uh, both agree that essentially the, the Exodus never happened as written. That while there were, in fact, Canaanites, um, Semites, in Egypt at the time, they were not there in anywhere near the numbers. They were there both as slave and as free. That the area that uh, the Jews supposedly escaped to was, was Canaan and was, in fact, at that time Egyptian. So they never left, left Egyptian territory. Um, and that it's not a, the, the entire desert that they wandered in was Israel. So the whole thing from start to finish has basically been shown to be completely incorrect as told, right? Now, there are individual cases of slaves escaping, uh, Semite slaves escaping Egypt and making it into Canaanite, which is probably where the story got, stole, got started from. But to say that there was a million people we just do not have the evidence to support the numbers that the, the Exodus claims. Um, we don't have the economic r uh, ruin that a million slaves exiting all at the same time would have caused. We don't have the evidence for the uh, biological or uh, uh, natural uh, mm -hmm. ruin that would have happened at the time. The syncretizing there's, of cultures. Yeah, there's just, there's just none of that but for Exodus. So that story, as written is completely untrue. But I, I, I don't mean to, and I'm not yeah. completely following. Um, you're, you're suggesting that the, the narrative that leads to a Messiah figure is I, 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 true in some sense, and yet um, the Jewish notion of a society, of, of a Messiah, was of a warrior savior who was going to come in at the end times and reestablish... Um, Jerusalem, which is why a, the majority of Jews don't even currently consider Jesus to have been the Messiah they were waiting on. So while there are some certainly mess Jews for Jesus and Messianic Jews who think that that's the case, there's plenty who don't. And the Torah and the Tanakh and th that would describe what they were waiting on, Jesus doesn't seem to fit. So wh where, apart from what you perceive as congruity, 
con con congruency, which I have issues with because mm -hmm. if I say this is going to happen in the future and I create a population of people who are actively working to see this happen in the future, um, it's completely unsurprising when we establish a nation of, Jer of Jerusalem, et cetera. What is it about it that is like evidence in your view that shows that this is all true, that that there was a a claims about a Messiah and that Jesus fulfilled prophecy and was the Messiah and that this all happened because Jesus actually was divine as opposed to these are just stories. Yes, yeah. Uh, I just want to say those those are two great points. Uh, I this is my first time calling, so I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure how mm -hmm. deep I can get into scripture, you know, I don't want to... You, you can do whatever you want. I Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, I, I, the way, the reason I think it's congruent is because there's a, there's a clear rift between the nation of Israel and, and the Lord, especially when you get into the books of uh, First and Second Kings, where Israel and, and the kings really start to just depart from the ways of the Lord. I, I would ag I, I would propose. Hang on, right? Oh, okay, go ahead. I, I would agree with you that in the storybook that you're pointing to, this is the narrative. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering what makes it true. The fact that the ancient Israelites were at odds with the God they believed in is an undeniable part of the story. But I care about whether or not it's true, not whether or not you can find congruency mm -hmm. in a story. So how do we know that there is in fact a God? that the ancient Israelites were at odds with. Okay, so can, can, if, before I answer that, can I ask you guys a question? Sure. Or Okay, so the, when it comes to, you know, evidence for bi biblical truth, you know, would you guys say that you look for, you know, hard scientific evidence, you know, like, some, like a form of microscopic observation? No. To, to you don't have to put it in a beaker, um, but mm -hmm. if you're just going to tell me that there are stories, um, those are claims. The stories are claims. They're not evidence for the claims. Right. And, and I'm interested in, in the same standard that a historian would use, and, and historians typically throw away anything that's supernatural right out of the, the, the gate, and I'm more than willing to do that as an atheist, of course. Um, so you need to go a little bit further. And with kings, um, I would want to, you to actually quote something outside of the Bible. Because as I've said before, the Bible is at best historical mm -hmm. fiction. And there are parts of kings that are entirely fictional. And I can't remember off the top of my head which of those are, unfortunately. Yeah, but, like if, I, if I made a list of four things, the, the sky is blue, I'm wearing an eye patch, I'm the smartest person that's ever lived in, in the entire history of the, of the world, and I'm better than God. Um, the fact that two of those are true doesn't tell you whether the other two are true or not. Right. They so, are. They, they definitely yeah. are. But. So I, I would be looking for something outside of the Bible for anything you're about to claim, and I'm going to throw away anything supernatural because I'm ex I, I want the same, you know, the same level of proof that, that any historian would want, um, keeping in mind that you know, there's a lot of stuff missing from, from history that we just don't have. And I only have to add one thing to that just it, to preempt the person who's dialing the phone right now, and that is... We are not saying the supernatural doesn't exist and that we're going to throw out every supernatural claim. We're saying if you make a claim that is rooted in the supernatural, you need to demonstrate the truth of that. So if, if you want to say, okay, well, God did this. Okay, how do we know God did this? Because if it's just a story. Um, it, it's the same thing as if somebody told me that they had a ghost visit them in the night. Well, that goes beyond what we know to, to be true naturally. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but you got to come with more than the story. So that's yep. that's where we're at, Roy. So that's what we're looking for 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 your your whatever you're about to say about kings. Okay. Uh, now I just do I still have time or? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah go. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. So wh when it comes to the like I was saying the congruency, you know, the coming Messiah, I think what what I would ask you that is that the the for, the formation of the church after Jesus comes and where we're at right now in history in terms of Christianity and everything that's been prophesied, you know, before Jesus, during the time of Jesus, that's, that's how I, that's how I see it as congruent. You know, there's okay. a, not only historical linear 
succession, but kind of a prophetic succession that we see that, you know, there's going to come a Messiah. And, you know, it, when, when I would like to point to script, to the, to the scriptures, where, oh, you know, where it says. There, there's okay. a problem with, with your, your prophecy. Uh, and I just, I, I just kind of want to address this really quickly. And that is that the writers of the New Testament had access to the Old Testament. So, of course, book yes. two is going to fulfill the prophecies of book one. This is a standard trope. The fact that this happens is not proof that the prophecies were true. It is proof that the authors of book two had book one and were making sure that their character fulfilled those scriptures. So you need to go a lot farther to yes. prove prophecy when you're, when you're looking at the Bible because that is the most likely case given that, once again, you're claiming something supernatural, prophecy, and yet we have no evidence that prophecy is even possible. Yeah, the, the author of Matthew is, in, this is well known among New Testament scholars and nothing that is necessarily atheistic, um, was desperate to identify where he felt or claimed that Jesus fulfilled prophecy. And in doing so, he included things that don't even exist in the Old Testament. Um, but none of those things are, are anything that we can verify. Like, I'm not a mythicist. But you cannot even verify that Jesus existed. I have no problem with the notion that he did. I, I have problems with the notion that we know what he said and what he did and, and with any sort of accuracy. But how could you demonstrate, and, and I, I know this is, I'm not going to put you on the spot for this. I don't know how somebody could even demonstrate that Jesus existed. But what we do know is that so far that hasn't been done. Generally speaking, we'll all just assume that if somebody's written about in, as, as if they were a real figure, okay, we'll just go with their real figure. The problem is that in Jesus's case, if you list everything that you know about Jesus from what the Bible says, and then take all of the things that we can't verify, what's left? Hey, remove the things we can't verify, what's left? Do we even know the name? The parents? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great point, yeah. The lineage? I don't know anything. And, and this is not just like Jesus bashing, although I'm happy to Jesus bash. Um, people keep telling me, oh, this is the Bible's the word of God, and God said this, and God did this, and I'm like, I know that in the storybook it says God did this. It also says God did a bunch of horrific things. But how do you know that there's a God and that you have an accurate reporting of what God's done? And for me, the killer kind of end of all of this is what Christians in particular would like you to understand is that God loves you. God does not want you to be damned to hell, even though he made it, uh, as Jim was pointing out, to, to punish people or to punish the devil and then people. Um, and that God's good created a loophole by coming down and taking human form and sacrificing himself to himself. But all of this keeps just getting back to the story. If there is a God and that God actually cares about me and wants me to spend eternity with him, how could I not know that? Why is that God playing the world's best game of hide and seek? Why doesn't God show up right now on the show, appearing here between Jim and myself to tell the thousands upon thousands of people who are going to see this, that he's real, here's the demonstration. Why is it that we have to have a discussion about can we find some congruency between book one and book two, or books, the first 30 some odd books and the last 26 books? Um, it, it doesn't make sense to me. And so while I can appreciate, Roy, that, that you find congruency there and, and probably value and uh, meaning in the stories, I want to know what's verifiable, and I don't mean that in the sense of we, you got to put it in a beaker, but anything that we were going to prove about the past, anything in history, like, for example, yeah. to consider George Washington. There's a bunch of stories about George Washington. He was the first president. I've never met him. I'm never going to see him. Uh, how do I know he was the first president? Well, it's not because somebody told me. It's because a number of historical sources outside of the George Washington book of fun quotes told me. And then there are stories that George Washington couldn't tell a lie and admitted to chopping down a cherry tree. I don't believe that that story is true. Um, I doubt you do. Uh, and yet that's a part of the story. Now, if we don't have a time machine, we don't have independent verification, I can't verify whether or not George Washington told a lie or whether he chopped down a cherry tree. 
and that's only a couple hundred years ago. How are we going to prove that there's a God who came down and took human form and did these things that are reported and that we need to believe this in order to be saved from what he's going to do to us if we don't believe it? I mean, there's a level of absurdity that just can't be solved with, I found some congruent passages between these two. Does that make, that make sense to you? No, it makes it makes absolute sense. Um, I think what, what what is difficult about proving the, the you know either biblical truth or the existence of God uh, it, to me, you know, it's it's based on what the Bible says about God and how He decides to reveal Himself. Why? You know, what, there, hang on. Why are you giving a default? I'm just going to accept what the Bible says. Why would you do that for the Bible and not for the Quran or Dianetics or uh, the Agabagah Vita or any of those? Why, why is it that you picked the Bible to give a complete pass to on actually backing up its claims? Well, if, well, if, if I'm if say what I'm going to say, it's going to come off as the typical, oh, you know, you were born in Christianity, which I was. That's fine. I, I want to know the answer, even if I think it's the dumbest answer I've ever heard. I still want to know it. I, I, I'm just trying to find to figure out why it is that you, as a rational human being, have said this particular book can't demonstrate the truth of its claims, and neither can these five over here. But I'm going to give a pass to this one. That's what I want to know. Sure, sure. Well, I have had personal experiences in the church. Um, I just, I, I guess, you know, me personally, I, I, I just have a natural disposition to feel a connection to the text of the Bible. Now, granted, I have not studied Islam. I have not studied a bunch of other pagan, pagan religions. But from other stuff that I have studied, you know, I just naturally have always gravitated towards the scriptures. And... I, you know, in, in, in my, in my brain, you know, as, as dumb as that sounds in my brain, I, I, I just truly feel like there is a congruency there, you know, and, right. and uh, you know, in, in my ideal world, I, I would love to discuss this with you guys for an hour. Well, we've just, we just poked some serious holes in your idea of congruency, right? We just pointed out, you admitted that, that Exodus was an important part of that. Um, Exodus wasn't true. We, you, you said as part of, of that, that uh, the prophecies, and we pointed out that book one was written with full knowledge, or excuse me, book two is written with full knowledge of book one, and you can't use prophecy for your congruency. We, we've pointed out quite a few of these things. So let me make a suggestion um, to enhance your understanding of the Bible, to go and read uh, some, some actual historians from in that area uh, go read some Assyrian history. Go read some other history in the Mediterranean, in that whole area right there, uh, right around uh, you know Egypt and all those places. Go read those histories and get a better understanding of what's going on at that time and in that place for each of those places as you go through the Bible. I think that as you do that, if you go, especially when you're doing something like Kings, and you realize that about, I don't want to say half, but a number of those places in Kings are completely fictional and that, and that we know that certain other things just didn't happen, that you're going to find that those congruencies really aren't there. Um, so, so stay away from, I mean, there's a whole bunch of literature by, by a guy who claims all this archaeological stuff. The problem is he's not an archaeologist. Go read what the archaeologists are saying. Go read what uh, historians are saying. Go read the peer-reviewed history of the area. Roy, I'm happy. I, I, don't, I can't promise when I'll have time or anything else, but I'm entirely happy to have incredibly long conversations about this stuff off of the show as, as well. Um, especially with anybody who's willing to, you know, <laughs> not just say, oh, you're wrong, but I can't prove it. In your case, what you're, what you're saying is, I mean, you, you called in initially and you're like, the Bible's true and there's evidence. And then when we had a discussion about evidence, it's you're, you're including evidential things um, that we wouldn't accept for the, the proof of the claims in the Bible. We need something significantly stronger than that. But at the end of the day, if, if you just, you personally gravitate uh, towards the Bible as opposed to other books. Uh, y you're right. I do think that that has a lot to do with w where and how you grew up. Um, you're surrounded, I I'm assuming you're surrounded by people 
who also have believed this and that you were essentially taught to believe it and that what you view, and I could be wrong, I'm happy to have evidence of this, but what you view as your natural inclination towards that isn't natural at all, but is in fact learned. And I can tell you that there were things, reactions that I had in my life that I thought were natural. I remember growing up, if I saw two guys kissing, I would have a sort of ick reaction to it. Um, and I remember the day, I don't remember the day that it changed. I remember the day that I recognized that it changed. And that's when my f former co-host Don Baker got married and he and his husband kissed uh, up there. And I went, oh, oh, that's so sweet. And I realized, hang on a minute. I thought it was a natural revulsion to be like, oh, that's, that's the gay stuff. Ooh, stay away. No, it's learned. But we don't know what is learned and what is natural. And even things that might be natural, like your, your, just your character being inclined towards something, can be unlearned and can be altered when you realize, for example, holy crap, this thing that I believe makes me a bigot. It makes me um, treat other people as if they're inferior. It makes me uh, just a person I don't want to be. Now, I'm not saying this to you. You could be awesome across the board, Roy. I don't know. So far, you're awesome. Um, it, but Thank you. the thing that you think that you that you're naturally gravitating to set aside I mean, take Jim's recommendations I'm not trying to undermine that but set all that aside and sit down and do an inventory of positions you hold that you think are natural and what could potentially change your mind about them and how confident you are that you weren't actually taught or didn't learn even without being taught because kids are incredibly good at picking up on unspoken messages from the people around them, the people who are raising them, and integrating that. We're, we're little mimics and things like that. I, I would spend some time thinking about those things. And if it turns out that you find out that beyond you, your perceived natural attraction to it and congruency, that there actually is evidence that proves the remarkable claims in the Bible, uh, definitely give us a call back because I, I know we're always interested if somebody can actually make the case. Unfortunately, in the entire history of the world, no nobody's come close. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm, so, I'm totally aware of that, which is, you know, I because I, I've seen the show in the past, you know, mm -hmm. when I, I called, I was a little bit nervous and I was kind of geeking out because I'm talking to you guys, but I just, I never, I never thought the, the, the approach of like, oh, you know, I saw a miracle and things like that was a, was a good idea to present the case simply because as, even as a Christian myself, you just don't see in this day and age, the miracles that you hear of, you know, when Jesus was around or in the old Testament and now, which I believe that there's theological reasons for that, why you don't see miracles today. But I just, I just thought that, you know, more of a historical uh, presentation would be better. Now, granted, I have not really studied the, all the history that the other gentleman just mentioned. So, mm, sure. I, I, no, I, I definitely want to start reading more on that, you know, because, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, this, this is important stuff for me, you know, because I right. really like reading history in the Bible. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you guys for, for that suggestion. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Ray. Yeah, you're welcome. Keep in touch. And you can email tv at atheist-community.org, but... Uh, you can also dig around and, and find my email address if you have other questions. And if you don't want to talk to me, because I can be a prick, um, <laughs> you should definitely look into Recovering from Religion, because despite the name, recoveringfromreligion.org isn't for people who are newly atheist uh, or even for people who are necessarily questioning, but for people who are interested in learning and, and are maybe struggling with some things, um, that could be a resource. There's a number of uh, groups, including you know the, the unofficial uh, Facebook forums and things like that. Uh, I, I would love to promise all of my time to everybody who wanted to have 20 hours of conversations because I, I genuinely dig that, but uh, unfortunately I can't, but I'll do what I can. So I appreciate the call and the time, Roy. Thank you. Thank you. Could you, could you just repeat that, that dot .net name again? Oh, Recovering From Religion, recoveringfromreligion.org. Okay, perfect. Thank, thank you guys so much. Thank oh, you. Absolutely.